All right, welcome back to Comedy or Worse. Hell yeah, I'm here with special guest Benny Benoit. Hell yeah. So, how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, about seven months now. Hell yeah. You started in June at the comedy store in La Jolla. Oh, really? So, did you call like the first time? Uh, no, the week before the first time I went up, I just kind of showed up to watch, and then the second week, I yeah. was ballsy enough to call in and sign up, and I got pulled up my first week, so. Well, awesome. Congratulations. But the second week, I didn't realize you were supposed to call and confirm, so I just called the number, and then I was running late. Like, I called to sign up, didn't find out if my name got pulled, because uh, I got lucky the first time. I didn't call that time either. I go the second time, running a little bit late and pulled up, apologizing, so sorry I'm late, so sorry I'm late, what am I on? They were like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> you didn't get called? No, so I just, I was too shy to just walk right out, so I stayed and watched a few. Yeah, that makes sense. That's funny. Uh, so, yeah, I guess we come to Paul. Hell yeah. Uh, so, Benny and Paul, is that your full name or you use the stage name? It is, it's more of an alias. I had it years before I got on stage, but oh, no, okay. it's not technically my real name. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, my parents call me Benny. Benny's on my paychecks at work, so oh, yeah. we're legit enough. It's on the affidavit from when I got arrested. It's all, it's all legit. Okay. Cool. <laughs> uh, so, let's see. Started, she started in comedy in San Diego, then that's cool. Yep. Um, so, well, what made you decide to start comedy? I mean, I feel like I've always been kind of like the class clown kind of character, like the funnier guy of the group, but I never thought that I was capable of writing jokes. It always felt like so fabricated, I never really looked into it. Yeah. But that was, I feel like, because I always thought not just anybody could do comedy. You know, like the first real comedy set I ever saw was when Kevin Hart blew up. So, you know, I didn't really know that there was such thing as a comedy scene. So okay. I got into podcasts like a couple of years ago and through some of the podcasts, I realized like, wait, an open mic, like you can just sign up and anybody can go up and make jokes. Wow. And it was kind of like, you know what, fuck it. I'll, I'll try because the way it sounds, the way these comedians that I'm listening to describe what they do, that sounds like a dream come true for me. So if I can get over the whole, oh, well, these are fabricated jokes, it's not just conversation, then, you know, maybe it would be fun. And That's I fell so in love cool. with it immediately, so. That's awesome. So what is your writing process? Uh, well, I work uh, by myself, traveling, like client to client, I do aquariums. And okay. so there's a lot of, uh, like, downtime driving where I can just kind of turn most of my brain off and just uh -huh. think it's all right. Uh, like, not right whenever I'm driving, but I think of things when I'm driving. And then also in the shower, I get a lot of writing done. Yeah, but cool. there's so many times just throughout the day, like, I'll be mid-conversation and just like, wait, I have to pull out my phone and write that down because we can work with that later. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. good. Yeah, a lot of people... I hear about the writing, and not so much the writing process because everybody's different. It's just like I've lost jokes, so now all my jokes are in the cloud. So it's like I remember hearing about that. You were telling somebody about that. I'm having problems with my cloud right now with all my um, videos and photos and stuff. Too much of that. I I guess I can't really find any answers. Like my phone knows that they're there. I've interacted with these videos and photos recently, but what, they what won't operate. Yeah. Uh, just iOS. Oh, okay. So, so I'm gonna try to have you looked at, uh, on iCloud. I've tried to pull it up on my phone, but I was at work when I was doing most of this. Like I, I got off work and got ready to come here. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna put some more time into it. Um, yeah, maybe yeah. this weekend. Yeah, you have a computer. You can go to iCloud. And look yeah, I have a MacBook, and I need to start. I want to use that as like it's just. I feel like that would probably be easier than a phone in terms of organization, and then you can accomplish more with the computer. So I want to start utilizing that more anyway. So this is kind of like motivation to do that. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, let's see, so do you have like any other hobbies that you do besides comedy? 
Yeah, um, you know, like I said, I'm working aquariums, but it, that started as a hobby. So oh, okay. I, I'm really big into like animals and stuff. I have two dogs, a snake, some turtles, a couple of fish tanks. I have like a little zoo that's kind of been my thing for a while. And then whenever I moved here, I picked up surfing. So that's pretty fun. Oh yeah. Yeah. What about you, man? What do you do outside of comedy? <laughs> oh, you know, uh, making my own merch. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Sketches. I have a sex so accounts company. Um, do uh, play video games. I'd like to get into some some video games. Yeah. I feel like that's better because like if I end up where I'm bored <clears throat> and I've already gotten done any chores I need to do and there's no comedy available for me to do and I'm already satisfied with how many jokes I have to try out, I end up like my last resort for boredom is just like phone social media stuff like that and i feel like that compared to video games neither one of them are all that great but video games is probably more mentally stimulating and a little bit more yeah. fun probably oh yeah definitely they're definitely a great form of escapism or you still feel like you're um accomplishing something and you're like part of the story there's a lot of like it's just art you know you just so just being passive, you're, just, you're like interacting and you're choosing what to do. Right. It's like goal oriented. It scratches like that competitive itch and stuff yeah, like that. Definitely. But I'm still running on like a old PlayStation Four that I got for half an ounce of weed like five years ago. So I need to make a little upgrade before I get into stuff. Yeah. PS Five is great. I I want to get a console, but I. I'm like so poor uh, I feel like because my roommate has a switch I can invest in like a $20 game on the switch and maybe get some action going on or, or there's um, you know a lot of free games out there you know just uh, you just gotta look around or like a subscription when you have the game pass a couple of like games right. where you but I would still have to buy the PlayStation 5 you don't have to buy a console you can like stream games Xbox Game Pass. I don't have an Xbox either, though. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. You don't have to have an Xbox. You sign up for Game Pass. Oh. And you, can, you know, I mean, it costs money, but there's so many games on there. Interesting. Okay, yeah, I didn't know about that. that. I was like playing Cocoon and Lies of P and you know, I know Halo. There's like all there's all kinds of games on there. I used to be into Call of Duty until like you know, 800 million 13 year olds decided they were going to dedicate their life to it. Yeah. My dad was like a half gamer growing up and then he would always bully me so I felt like I could maybe beat him at something. So during the summers I would try to get really good at Call of Duty and then during the fall we'd play and he'd still win and you know I'd cry and the cycle repeats itself. Yeah, that's awful. It'd be like that. But speaking of my dad, that reminds me. I'm related to some trade hands. I have a big like portion of my family that's trade hand, but we pronounce it Trauma in Louisiana. Okay, T R A H A N. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Maybe we're related. Are you French in any way? No, I heard that the name is French Canadian. Okay. Well, French Canadians is who migrated down to Louisiana and formed the Cajuns, Acadians, and all that stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So uh, he's not like blood related, technically speaking, but he married my grandmother like before I was born. So he's always been part of my life. And, you know, I've gone to the family reunions and stuff. So the Trump aunts, as we call them. So the first time I saw you go on stage, whenever I heard Trey Han, I was like, wait, that's the white way to say Trump. <laughs> Somebody, somebody's French in here. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. Yeah, that's, uh, we have to look into that. Did you ever do 23 Me? No, I, I either <laughs> expected you were about to say that. I'm a little scared. Well, yeah, I knew they got hacked at that long ago. Oh, I didn't know about that. Yeah. I was just, I was scared of the truth. It just because there's like... Or your name? No, 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 no. But my mom was very young, um, and I never really knew my biological dad. Oh. And turns out, so I was raised by another man that I call my dad. But my biological dad ran around town having a bunch of kids and their moms have tried to reach out to my mom to try to like introduce me to my siblings and all that stuff. 
And I just feel like, especially now with comedy, me making myself more present on social media, I just don't want to deal with people reaching out to me. I don't want, like, I don't know if my information is already on 23andMe, but if it's not, I would like to keep it that way. Okay, so yeah, you'd rather just not know some people. Right, I know enough people as it is. I know, I know like at least 37 people right now, and that's plenty. <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting how social media just like you have all these friends on social media and then like you don't see them anymore. There's been times where I'm like I'm friends with the person on Facebook and I'm like saying, Oh nice to meet you. Whenever you see them in person. And it's like, oh no, we've met before. Oh, yeah, oh I'm sorry. And then we look it up, oh yeah, we're friends on Facebook or, or whatever. Right. My brain can only handle so much. And then it doesn't really appeal to me in like a casual sense. Like uh, like I said, I'll go to social media as my last possible resort. But what I say by social media, I mean like the explore pages, the algorithm stuff, because I don't know what's coming next. It's interesting. And if I don't like it, I'll skip it. I'll go to the next thing. But in general, like when it comes to Instagram, I don't really scroll through my feed and see like my friends and what they're up to and stuff like that. So if you don't interact with me, I'm not gonna really know what's going on. Right. And when I see some people and they're like, oh yeah, I did this. I'm like, oh, you never told me about that. Like, oh, I'll post it on Instagram. You didn't see my Instagram? Wow, why, why aren't you keeping up with me? I'm, I'm living my life, why couldn't you talk right. to me? There's an algorithm, so you would literally have to be like, have a list of your, <laughs> have yeah. a list of your friends that you wanna keep up with and go to each one of their profiles and look through it. Exactly. Otherwise, it's just, it feeds what you like they're talking about stuff you don't like. Or or maybe you like it, but not don't like it as much as something else. Right, right. Just like kind of go down. Or like if you and one of your closest friends just so happen to disagree politically, you know, just because you guys can look past that in real life and you guys are still friends, the algorithm doesn't always know that. And so it'll like, it'll steer you away from things that you actually would like to see, you know? Yeah. I just, I'm not really like a big, tech guy, you know, I'm a real life guy. Yeah, you like to do something in, in person. Exactly, because what, what I see on my phone doesn't really imprint into my brain. Well, I mean, it probably does more than you think. I agree with that. The problem with, like, for example, advertisements is that they work. Yeah, that's yeah. the problem with them. That's why I don't like them. They don't work. And I try, like, I'm like aware of the algorithm while I'm scrolling. So if I see like an ad, I try to skip it as soon as possible. Or if I see something I don't like, I try to skip it as soon as possible. But every now and then, it, like I'll forget for a second and I'm watching like an entire ad. I'm, Damn it, now they're gonna get me every 30 seconds for the next week over something that's at least somewhat closely related. And there's no way to get out of it. No, it just learns and then it's harder and harder to, to really tell the difference. And every decision. You're not, if you're not like really paying attention to like, okay, who is this? I don't recognize that account. Just right. go. And then the longer you use it, the better it knows you. So the better yeah. it's gonna get and it's all bad. I don't like it. I'll stick to my fish and tell them my silly little jokes. Oh yeah. That's cool. So uh, let's see, back to time. What <laughs> are your goals in comedy? Honestly, I, I mean, I would obviously like to make a career out of it and who doesn't want to be rich if they have the faculties to do so, but the ultimate goal is I don't want to have to stress about, um, you know, the concrete things in my life, like bills, um, you know, food, all, all the necessities. I don't want to have to stress about that. And right. in terms of making money to provide for that, I don't want to be miserable at my job. And the way I see it, this is the most fun thing I've ever done that could also make me money. Right. So I'll go as hard as I can with that. But I also am not, I don't feel like I'm one of those people where like, oh, I would be okay at like 50, 60 years old and I'm a full-time comedian and I'm selling out shows and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but I'm still not happy. Like I would sacrifice that if it's not what's right for me. You know what I mean? Right. Like I have a very open mind in terms of what makes me happy. I know that it's, well, uh, um, what's it called? It's subject to change. 
at any time. So I know that I'm really into comedy now, but I'm not opposed to giving it up later if I find something else, you know? Sure, yeah. Also, there's a lot of paths to, yeah, to get to different things. You know, you could like do a podcast and then your podcast is bigger. People know you more from your podcast right, right. than your stand-up. I mean, they can also know, oh yeah, he, that's that, he, he has a podcast, yeah. he also does comedy. Oh, he's gonna be in, in our town. Or, yeah. or we're gonna be at his town or whatever. I would love for the podcast aspect of it to take over more because I feel more comfortable, um, you know, in a conversational sense. Like I alluded to earlier with the, like how I got into comedy, my entire life I always thought I can't write jokes. I'm just funny when I talk to people. Sure. And so I still feel like podcasting would be like the best route for me. Cause I don't feel like I'm a skit guy. I feel like I couldn't really do like acting all that much. And then stand-up is a ton of fun, but, I mean, seven months in, I've bombed plenty enough times to realize it's hard, and it's not for everybody, and it doesn't always feel great, and that feeling doesn't go away. Even the pros still have to bomb every now and then when they're trying out new jokes and stuff like that. Well, I, I, I always try to, like, think of a bomb as me as an unwilling kamikaze pilot, <laughs> right? Right. Where even when I'm bombing, like, it doesn't matter... I, I hate this audience. It's their, you know, try, it's very easy to try to blame the audience, but you know, you're, you're like, you're, tr tr I'm trying to get out of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um, or, or, or like, well, sometimes it's like, well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do these new jokes. I don't care. Yeah. I'm, one of them might hit. I, I pulled myself out. I mean, not a full bomb because, like, there are times when you would just have to all of a sudden become Robin Williams. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, whoa, he's channeling a famous comedian. Now, you're not doing their jokes, but just, you know, turning it on to like, some bombs are just so bad. But you can, you know, you even a bomb sometimes, like, there's parts where they, they are trying to, you know, nobody, no audience, I don't think, wants to have people bomb. They want to laugh and right and then we'll right. try to give you they want to have a good time i do feel like there's sometimes the crowd is kind of like already not like they you know like whenever you lose the crowd even whenever you say a joke that would normally pull them back up you're still kind of gambling in the sense that they might not be feeling it at this point anymore and then also i've noticed that because my jokes are so like dirty there's times where I just lose them from the jump. You know, like if I introduce a joke, like I have that sex offender joke, I feel like there's a lot of times where as soon as they hear the word sex offender, they're like, whoa, what's he about to say? Because he better be in favor of everybody against sex offenders. And, you know, like once I lose them on that one, like I've never, basically, I've never been able to recover after making that joke. And it's kind of, you know, tickled my perspective a little bit. In okay. terms of yeah, how like, the crowd feels, and okay. your comedy changes based on feedback from the audience. Absolutely. So uh, maybe that's a joke that it's not worth, or even just like putting it aside, because there's definitely jokes that I put aside and then came back to, and like, yeah, okay, I've been able to figure out how to do it better. I feel like that's like I, I really feel like there's a good premise there. But I just think I haven't figured out how to deliver it in a way that doesn't make me look like an asshole. Sure, I would also recommend saying stuff, recording yourself saying it with no one else around and then watching it. Interesting. And try to think of what a regular, you know, would I do it. And also, like, a, ch a big challenge is to do clean material. So yeah, I have to see you challenge yourself. I would challenge yourself, I'm telling you, if you can do clean material, you're going to get booked. There's a lot of clubs that even, like, that, you know, uh, even if the, like, the headliner's okay to do whatever they want, mm -hmm. like, the other people are, are expected they have to, to be more clean, clean. Yeah. and not do crowd work. And now, when you're doing clean, is it, like, cursing and everything? You can't curse, or is it just the material itself? Think of it like, say that you were going to like, well, I mean, I've performed like 
I didn't know it was have to be clean. Like at an Italian restaurant while people were eating and there was literally like, I don't know, like eight or 10 year old and like a preteen, 11, 12 year old. And they're with their parents. And they're with their parents yeah. and other people. And I was, you know, I was like, you know, a lot of my jokes are, are you know, focused like clean and like going over kids' heads. Mm. You know, you can talk about stuff, like, you just kind of hint at it. I have an yeah. easy joke, have you heard that? I have, I don't recall exactly how yeah. it goes right now, but I have heard Oh, no, I haven't. My favorite oh. one of yours is the all over That's the bike. Oh, that's it? Okay, yeah. we're perfect. <laughs> yeah. So that bike like, goes over their head, you know, like maybe a teenager is so, oh, wait, I know that that is that right. Or they're like, I think they're talking but about that. If they're not old enough to be cool, then they're not old enough to get it. Yeah, or or maybe they'll get it, but just um, they're not gonna like say something out loud and let everyone know yeah. that they get it. I, like, I feel like they wouldn't get enough takeaway from it to where it becomes one of those jokes that they run around school telling and eventually get in trouble for. Sure. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Have you ever had someone? tell your joke back to you and, and, and mess it up bad. Like, asking me like, oh, what's that bit about the blah, 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 blah. Or no, like, like uh, they actually go, oh, I love your joke. And they try to tell you your joke. Oh, yeah. And they're like, you're like, okay, I'm glad you like it, but you didn't do it that, yeah. good at all. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that happens fairly often. Um, Especially, uh, I also feel like a lot of my jokes, if you see them written down as just words, they're not really all that great, but the, the timing and the delivery and stuff like that really plays like a key role. And most people, whenever they're telling the story, they just are not telling the story, but trying to describe the joke, they just kind of hit the points. And so for, like most of the time, I feel like my jokes sound bad when other people describe them. And I often say to people like, like look, I promise if you hear it on stage, it's like, it's not as disgusting as it sounds. Yeah. And then I've also been um, confused with other comics a few times, like where people say like, oh yeah, don't you have the bit about blah, 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 and it's something I've never even thought of. I don't know who is running around as my doppelganger in San Diego, but <laughs> watch out. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, so, do you want to try other styles in comedy, or you just? I mean, you know. I would like to get into more storytelling. I just feel like I haven't succeeded yet in telling a story on stage. Like basically, all of my bits come from an event that happened, and then I spent hours thinking about that event and playing with what could have happened, or commentating on the small things. And I end up with a couple of minutes of jokes about a 10 second interaction. But I would like to get, like to find a way to tell the stories that I've lived through. Cause I've had like a very unique life. Have, have you ever tried to just go up there with nothing? Except like maybe an idea. Oh, I'm gonna tell the story of X. Yeah, it didn't go well. It didn't go well. Well, I mean, you gotta keep doing it. Yeah, I think that's what it was, is like, because it was a true story and there was nothing fabricated about it, I felt so, like, intimate and it didn't go well, so that scared me away. But I'm really trying to work past that aspect of comedy. Yeah, it's not easy. This is a podcast. This is a podcast? Yep. This is comedy. <laughs> yeah, we're in the, live in the brick room. Probably gets out of frame because the door's right over there. Yeah, we get no respect. I have thought about putting up a sign, but it's like, it kind of is interesting. It, it could be anybody at any time could yeah. open the door. I'm hoping Carlos pops in at some point. He's, he's a repeat popping, isn't he? A lot of times it's like, it just happened to be recording when he's hosting or something. <laughs> and so he comes in and he's still on from the uh, stage work yeah, and stuff. Exactly. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's a Um, what about merch? Do you think you'll ever do merch? I mean, I'm sure at some point, uh, I haven't really thought about it a lot. Also because I don't really 
I'm not a very, I don't buy clothes. Most of my clothes are things that are given to me or things that I just randomly stumble across. And so I feel like because I'm not the, part, the type of person to buy merch, if I put out merch, if people don't buy it, I'm gonna feel stupid and embarrassed. And it just- Frank talk to the man, man. man. Yeah. That, if I could do it like that- Frank on demand, it's easy. Advertise like an Instagram thing with fake likes so people think that it's popular and then send out like 12 shirts to my family back home. Then I might, I might be okay doing it then. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's see. So what was your family life growing up? Well, um, my mom, uh, it's, we're going to get a little intimate here. And I apologize if any of my family sees this. <laughs> so my mom was 15 when she got pregnant with me, uh -huh. uh, with her let's just say a friend at the time, uh, who was a little bit older, and my family, or her like parents and stuff, did not approve of him at all, so they basically booted him out of the picture immediately, and he would try to come back, but then she met the guy that I call my dad, uh, who's like 17 at the time, and he's a really like, big, he's like my height, but like 280 pounds, and you know, beard tattoos and stuff, and he basically told my dad that like, you know, if I see you, it's over with. And so that and that type of energy is also how he raised me. And then my mom, you know, she had her own life job. I mean, she was 15 when she got pregnant. And I was a mess up until like two years ago, so I don't blame her. But it was kind of like, she was living with us, and I know she wasn't gonna be mean to me, so I could always go to her for like a little bit of comfort. But she didn't really do like a lot of mothering, if that makes sense, yeah. in the way that I at least view it, it should or could have been done and then my dad was like always right there with me like kind of like my best friend growing up but he was very 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 hard on me and so i didn't really get to figure out who i was until later on in life so i blossomed after my parents divorce and <clears throat> was left kind of to my own devices because mom you know she uh, ended up, over again. Uh, when they divorced yeah. 14. Oh. 14 and then he you know, both of them were teenagers when they got together and already had me as a kid. So he wanted to live his life and kind of party it up a little bit. He's like still in his 20s at the time. My mom, she's going through all kinds of stuff. So she ended up going to rehab and I was just kind of like left to my own devices. And that's- no, I'm, not, I'm not following the math here. Hmm. Yeah. I'm trying not to reveal too much, but I kind of uh, feel like okay. I should just be open. No, it's fine. Do you just, your math it doesn't doesn't work out. I know. Right? I didn't. I didn't realize that until yeah. after I said it. That like, if I'm gonna cut things out, I might want to make it flow as well. <laughs> no, it's fine. I mean, you're you're not under no obligation to tell anything that you don't want to reveal. No, it's it's cool. I'll uh, basically, parents were very young and didn't really know what they were doing in life, right. and so I was just kind of subject along to that. And my dad was super super hard on me. My mom was just kind of like uh, a supporting figure to the side. And then they divorced whenever I was 14. And she went off to rehab while he went off and lived the man, the young single man's life. Okay. And so I was just kind of like on my own. At this point, I'm 17 by the time, you know, that has ran its course. And so at 17, that's whenever I, uh, I moved off to Baton Rouge to go to, or not at 17, I'm sorry. At 17, I was on my own in Louisiana, high school football track, going through the business. But I joined uh, LSU, I went to college to be an uh, anesthesiologist pre-med. Okay. And basically, uh, miscommunication with an advisor that I had led to me dropping a course that I actually needed to graduate. And so I got put on academic probation and stuff like that because I didn't have the credits that I was supposed to have that year, which made me have to be a volunteer worker at my job because it was a student job, so they weren't able to pay me because wow. of the academic probation. So I ended up kind of selling weed here and there to kind of pick up the slack. And then next thing you know, now I owe tuition and uh, I'm still not really passing my classes because I'm trying to pay my tuition by selling weed instead of studying that kind of just snowballed until I dropped out and just sold weed for a couple of years. That's what led me to California. Okay. 
Okay. California was, you know, just, I was just about to get there and then boom, I go to jail for the weed stuff. So I get out of jail and get permission from the judge to move here. That's whenever I, you know, I had this job, I'm not really doing anything with my time, I moved out here, no friends, no family, and I just get into the podcast and that kind of like sparked comedy for me. All right, cool. Sorry, that was kind of like a lot. No, it's fine. It was, we're, we're getting to know you, the whole podcast and the whole San Diego comedy scene. Yeah. Um, so, what about uh, going back to school? Did you ever think about doing that? I thought a lot of times, can just like um, it depends on how long it's been in the school. You know, you can like go to another school, like a local school here, and like you can get, get your records towards yeah, the degree. You, you get your records transferred, and you can just get yeah, at least part of it. You know? Well, I know I definitely wouldn't go back to pre med because that was one of those things where like I was a really like smart kid, and my family was. We were never more than lower middle class and just kind of like blue collar worker type stuff. And so they were really pushing me like, oh, well, you're smarter than any of us. So you have to go do greatness, be a doctor, be a lawyer, be a politician, be something like that. Right. And so science was like a big thing for me as a kid. So I just kind of accepted that role. And then after doing it for a while, I also realized it wasn't for me, but with the aquarium stuff that I do now. I could see myself going back to school someday for a marine biology degree, yeah. but only if I want it, you know? Like, I couldn't see myself being in a position where, oh, I need a degree to get what I want. Like, I'll just, I'll go for something else. I'm not a very... Well, yeah, there's other paths you can make. Exactly. Like, have your own aquarium business. Or... That was my plan for several years before I got into comedy. Now it's just kind of like, well, I've been paying my bills, working this job for so long, not really enjoying life. I like comedy. Comedy could, if my cards play out right, lead to success. So why not just keep doing what I've been doing and pursue comedy? You know? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's just good. Um, yeah. So, do you always just, well, like when you, if you ever think of like doing uh, a story and like uh, doing it in different voices, you know, like having like oh, you say you're talking about this this person and then talk in a different voice, yeah. or or are you just going to tell it flat? I mean, I haven't really thought about that, but I have really been considering lately leaning into the whole Cajun thing because a lot of my jokes are about Louisiana, so I did like a really thick Cajun accent. I feel like that would be kind of funny because that was something that always kind of made me laugh as a kid, not realizing that I had a little bit of a Cajun accent. Okay. So I thought about just going up and doing my entire normal set with a very exaggerated like Louisiana energy to me. Okay. Because I feel yeah. like that's, that's so cool. unique. A lot of people, if they could understand what I'm saying, they would find it hilarious. Sure. And even if they don't, you just sometimes the way it's a high percentage of communication is not verbal. So right. But you can just have them laughing and they can understand what you said. Yeah. And then I really feel like it would be strong if, like, I thought about doing the entire set just because I don't really have a lot of good stories. But if I told a story that included a Cajun character and then very suddenly slipped into their character and did the voice and then slipped back into mine, I feel like I would. I would enjoy that if I was in the crowd, you know? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so lots of uh, things to look forward to, to try. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I know that uh, I've not really put a lot of effort into writing since I've started comedy. I've kind of just been letting it come to me. But lately, I've been focusing more on it. So I'm kind of excited for like what's going to be coming in the next few months. Just because I know I'm going to be taking it more seriously. Or at least I am taking it more seriously right now. Okay, cool. So how much... Uh, how much time do you have, as we say, in the business? I mean, if I told my jokes that work, I'm, a, I'm really big on my jokes connecting to each other. Okay. So I can't make them connect in the way that I want them to, but I, I fully believe I could go up and do 10 minutes of jokes. Now, some are gonna be stronger than others, obviously, but. Oh, okay, uh, what about 
out tomorrow night? Are you free tomorrow night to do 10 minutes at Quantum Ruin? Yeah, I think I was actually planning on going to Quantum Ruin Hall. Okay, you got 10 minutes? Oh yeah, thanks man. I will try not to bomb my I will remote. make a note of that. <laughs> That's how I do it. I put it, the notes in the cloud and I do it as soon as I book the person so that um, I don't forget. How you get booked, baby? Yeah, come on the podcast. You might get booked. Uh, so how do you spell your last name? B-E-N-O-I-T. Characters like Nathan and uh, Ragu make it, uh, well, I don't know if Nathan's doing it on purpose, but oh, they yeah, like to knows. mess up the name a little bit. And I, I mean, I don't really blame people. It doesn't look all that. I know it's not a common name and it's not English, so. <laughs> oh, I mean, you know. I get a lot of annoyance. Well, it has all the English so. characters. It does. <laughs> it's not some symbol. If, I feel like it could use a W though somewhere, you know? Or I'll try to tell people, so like I'll spell it sometimes, Ben dash wa, like the, like the balls, the ladies, you know, the, the kegels or what, whatever they call them. I don't know what you mean. Ben wa balls, you never heard of that? Most people know that quicker than my last name. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's like little, uh, what do you call it, like ball bearings. Okay. And, um. You know, any women in the room, please correct me if I'm wrong. Well, yeah, I mean, you put it up there. You mean on the podcast, right? There's no one else in the room. No, I meant the crowd that's that's watching us, the live studio. Oh, audience. The live studio. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know we don't have a microphone to record their laughter and their applause, right? But, uh, basically, we ask them all to be quiet. That's fair. They're doing a good job. That's fair. We put their phones in a bag, so <laughs> you can't really blame them for being quiet. But the. There's like a ball, like ball bearings that women will put up their vaginal canal. Okay. And then I believe you manipulate the muscles and something that it makes it stronger. It makes it tighter. And I'm, I'm proud to be the, uh, you know, the founder of, of that Benoit balls. I see. Yeah. So there that, you go. It actually is a real thing though. This wasn't a joke. That's okay. a real thing. I was just saying, I mean, you can, you should put, <laughs> <laughs> you should that should be your merch pen one balls. I have a theory that one of my distant relatives created them but had the problem of people not being able to pronounce it, so he changed it to Ben W H A so people can Ben Wah. I think that's what uh listeners theory. I like yeah. it. I uh, I also think I would be able to revolutionize the coochie industry someday. There you go. If it wasn't for comedy. Well, I mean, you know, you gotta sell it somehow, right? Yeah. Some some things start off as a joke, and then right, it could become a product. And, there you go. and if I can make it on Shark Tank with Benoit, Benoit um, vaginal products, then I can just, you know, at the end of it, like, oh, by the way, you can find me on YouTube, I'm on Spotify, and then boom, success. Absolutely. It's essentially the plan in some shape or form. Create something. Yes. So, I'm going to ask you this, this question that I don't even know the answer. Do you remember when we first met? I remember seeing you on stage. I believe it was here. I don't remember when we first met, but I do remember seeing you on stage and just being kind of off put and thinking that you were like, you're a strange guy, but I like your fucking style, dude. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. I was having a fun. I want to say I saw you when I was in the sound booth for the first time. Oh, uh, okay. Because I remember just like dying laughing and nice. having to control myself. So it was probably soundboard considering I don't control myself in the audience. Cool. I think it's fine if you have laughter in the sound booth as long as you don't accidentally play the music. No, that's what I mean. Like, because I, I, I often sit there and every now and then I'll slip if I laugh too hard. So I remember trying to like compose myself while you were on there. I was having a great time. Cool. <laughs> Do you remember the first time you saw me? I, pro I probably remember that. I've like, had the I same remember for like, like four months. So. There has been times where I don't think it's just you. There's been times where I've saw someone pop their head out of the sound booth um, and I 
could look over and I'm like, who's that new person? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like that's a new comic in the sound booth. But right. I know like, well, most people can do fine on the sound booth. Um, yeah. It's it's kind of like been my thing, but I never really got formally trained how to do it. And so people, I hate whenever people look to me to fix it, and I'm just ah, yeah. It's, it's, there's some problems with the sound in there for yeah. sure. But, you know, you need to get a new keyboard and mouse, really. Yeah, it's it's not always the clearest, but I try to make do. It's just whatever. You know, they're like, this is the guy that's been working sound all night, and the sound has been dog shit all night. Yeah, like, I, I'm trying to tell people that, that work here, they don't need to always say that I work here. I would rather have them not say I work here when I go up on stage, but then after I'm off stage, it's different. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if they say, oh, there's my boss, or whatever. I like the... Like that, oh, what's it called? An anonymity? An anonymity? Anonymity? Something like that. Yeah. I like that. Because, I don't know, I feel like if they know anything about me, there's now expectations that I'm expected to meet. And it's not always about meeting them. Like, sometimes I surpass them, but it's not what they're expecting. And so the reaction's a little, you know, it's not quite what I want. I want yeah. raw, like, well, just yeah. genuine. Reactions. But sometimes it's, it's uh, good if you're like trying to say like promote a podcast and ask them to say, yeah, you know, you know the host of or the co-host of, of you know, the right, podcast. you know, like give it up for your next comic. Uh, he hosts comedy or worse, Aaron Tran. Yeah, done that. It's like, whoa, this guy has a podcast. What the fuck? Done a few times. There's been a few times where I just have not have the host to say anything and just start the podcast. You know, just it's so you quick three minute. Yeah. Thing. I found that very interesting. I listened to um, uh, Joey's the other day. <laughs> it felt kind of weird because I was sitting next to him recording the whole thing, but I didn't realize you were going to like post it like that clip. Yeah, of course. I, I thought yeah, that I was keep the audience it. engaged. Yeah. It was really Six cool. people. <laughs> yeah, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Oh uh, man, like a five by five foot room. Yeah, it was pretty, 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 pretty good uh, sound quality for that room. Yeah, it really was. It wasn't like too loud, but you could hear pretty much every word you were saying. Yeah. And then there was like a little bit of breath, but um, we did uh, Cloud9 hookah last week with a new microphone. Okay. And I swear every single breath that I took was heard through the microphone. Just wow. ev between every single joke. It was, it was like, I was in my head about it the entire time because of that. So now I've like been kind of listening. So I, I agree. Good sound. Oh yeah. That's cool. I think I bit off more than I can chew by talking about audio quality for a second there. That's fine. I mean, we're not going to edit this, don't worry. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Uh, let's see. So, what about, uh, have you been watching more comedy since you've been, you know, like live comedy since? Yeah, I mean, just being in the scene has gotten me in person to a lot more shows, but then outside of, like, being physically present, I've been trying to watch more of, like, old school comedy, like the classics and stuff, you know? Because mm -hmm. I, I feel like I relate to, uh, in California at least, I relate, like most of my friends are older than me. Most of the comics I looked up, look up to are even older than that. And there's a lot of references that go over my head. Like I try not to watch too much stand up because I don't want to pick up on somebody else's style and become less of myself. Right. But I want to I wanna know what's going on when people say things. So I've been watching a lot of classics lately. Oh cool, what about uh, any like comedy podcast? Or... Yeah, uh, I really love We Might Be Drunk with uh, Sam Morrill and Mark Norman. Okay. I don't really follow their comedy itself too much, but that podcast is like exactly what I want to do with Joey. But obviously I don't want to steal their shit so oh, we can yeah. make it our own, but yeah. that's like like the ideal model of a podcast to me, and those guys are hilarious. But also listen to uh, Theo Vaughn uh, this past weekend and Kill Tony. Okay, cool, yeah. And of course, comedy or worse, that's my favorite. 
crazy. We have a fan that's now a guest. Yeah. <laughs> how do we? How does that happen? It, it does show up on the like if I go to my home on Spotify, I have all like the stuff I regularly listen to, like songs, and your podcast is on there. When it pops oh, up, yeah. I get the little notification. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah man. You gotta grow the audience. Absolutely. You gotta start somewhere. Yeah, like when uh, the podcast was, or you know, before Spotify bought Anchor, there was like an audio community. It was like, you yeah. would like listen to other people's podcasts and then you call in, either ask a question or you would respond to their what they're talking about. And then I would have segments and then people would call in about that. That and sounds like, like a, a lot of fun. Yeah, it was so super fun. And like, I sometimes like, I mean, some episodes like had hundreds of listens and I'd like over time, you know, had like thousands of listens. And now it's like, oh, six yeah. listens. Like, because they restructured it, or, or I don't know what Anchor was like, because I got on Spotify when I was like 17, but uh, I imagine it was like it shifted more from a community thing to yes. more of a consumer-based thing. Yeah, exactly. Like the people that aren't contributing are now benefiting the most because they're putting in no work, but reaping all the same benefits as the people that have been in this community the entire time. Yeah, I don't, I don't like I, I try to like keep in contact with um, some of those people but it's just hard. I, mean, I just want to do so many things. I have so many yeah. hobbies. I mean, it's hard to keep up with, keep in contact with anybody these days if they're not doing the same thing as you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like some of my best friends uh, from back home that I talk to every day, but we were, we were like, I was busy with my life and they were busy with their lives and we were able to intertwine because we were local. I move out here and now it's like, well, you know, they're still some of the closest people I've ever been to, but we might not talk for months at a time. Yeah, and it's good to have friends that you can talk to again. It's like no time has passed. Right. Now, I never had like the anchor thing where we could talk like, like verbally online in that sense of community type thing, but I feel like, you know, I kind of get what you mean by yeah. missing those people. Well, I mean, I'm trying to like build a community around the podcast, so if you, uh, anybody in the, that has a show or like or or even want to like oh there's a new open mic or whatever just yeah go on spotify and, and send a voice message um to the podcast and then as long i'll screen it obviously i'm not going to push yeah. everything up there as long as you're not gonna like get kicked out of a club yeah. or something i didn't even know you could do that so i'll, I'll definitely yeah, yeah you can like by default, it says what you think about the podcast. Sometimes I put up polls, but you always are welcome to like call, uh, you know, send a message in. Yeah. Uh, even just like, oh, that that last episode with so and so. Yeah, it was great or whatever. Yeah, that's really yeah. interesting. I didn't know you could do that. I'll definitely. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get people to do it. So far, no one's done it. I'll send some pretty terrible comments to you. No, yeah. uh, no, no, I mean, I have, uh, I'm sure there's, there's some times where I can contribute and then, I mean, if you just spread the, the more you spread the word, the more you're going to get back and the more you get back, the more the word's going to get spread. So. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. And then I'm trying to like get people to have a podcast or something, uh, trying to like cross promote. Yeah. yeah. I mean, me and Joey are going to start that podcast as soon as we're trying to still work out the kinks. Like, uh, he has a microphone, but I would like to get a microphone. I'd also like to get some sort of camera, but I mean, you're, you're doing this off your iPhone, so maybe I don't really need a camera after all. No, I mean, you know. We were trying to get more, like angles, though, because the, the main point of the podcast for now is like clips, more exposure, because I feel like people aren't just gonna click on a 30 minute to an hour long podcast of people they've never heard of. Right. So we're, we're Look at, we're trying to set it up to be as professional looking as possible, and then we can figure out as we go along how we flow together, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is the first video version of, or besides, um, when I've recorded uh, the live episodes, I've done video for those, but they're not as interesting. Like the ones like, on stage? Yes, me on stage, I'm not gonna, but, I'm, but I might, but, but anyway, so, you're probably listening to this on the podcast feed, Comedy or Works, but just know that there is a Patreon. If you just go to Patreon and just search Aaron Make Me Laugh, you can get the video version of this podcast. Uh, you can get other uh, 
there's a bonus episode of um, it was Frankie Gonzalez and Jacob Johnstone. Yeah, there was a that. part two. You, did you listen to part two? I know it's how it cut off. No, I don't have Patreon. Right? You, you, oh, it's so easy to sign up. So I was about to ask with Patreon, is it like you pay for the app and then you get what's in the app, or do you pay no, for each it's, it's it's it's, it's uh, per user. Mm-hmm. Because I get some of the money, and then right. Patreon gets <clears throat> some of the money. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you know, it's like much? five bucks a month. Okay. And, you know, and you, you you can always just do it one month, or you can like wait three months from now, and then you get, you know, you can't say that you stop it, and then say, you know, you stop it. You do it for December, and then you stop it, and then I have something new in January come out. And then you buy it again. You have to. You would have to. You would have to subscribe again, you know, to, to see your to January see, stuff. But see, <clears> January, so if I subscribe, but say you waited till February, then you'd have February, January, yeah, December. Okay. That's what I was about. Not to, to not to say that you should wait until, you know. Yeah, we'll be careful how we advertise that part. Subscribe now, <laughs> and then I get what you're saying. Though it's low risk. You don't yeah. have, or it's yeah. low. It's not as you don't have to commit if you don't want to. Yeah, you don't even have to like me that much. You just have to want to support. Subscribe for artists. me. Subscribe for the guests. You know, yeah, come here for us. Just subscribe and then forget about it and then go, oh, that's okay. Yeah. You I know? mean, honestly, five bucks a month, I, it's not really worth going through the hassle of canceling the subscription sometimes. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't want to like. Um, Technically, I'm hemorrhaging money. I, I can send you this video yourself as long as you don't. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. That's uh, why I don't post it. I'm starting a Patreon tonight, <laughs> folks. Uh, follow me, Benny Benoit. This episode will be the first post. Oh, no. What did I do? Oh, you fucked yourself, bud. I, I take back what I said. <laughs> I, I, I just like anybody, I, I, I do not consent to that. <laughs> we don't need consent. Come on now. What have I ever? Don't, yeah, we're not gonna. We're gonna edit that part out. Yeah, we're gonna edit it out by stopping the podcast. <laughs> uh, well, anything. Anyway, uh, are, is there anything else you want to talk about? I want to know where, like, just you know, I don't know how much time we have left, but I would like a brief overview of how you ended up from being born to here. Just a little quick. You intrigued me. You intrigued me. So, so, so the problem is when we talk about. Me, I forget what I've told told other guests. Okay, and I don't want to keep repeating myself. Uh, I grew up in Santa Rosa, California. Shout out, gang. Um, so that it's an hour or more north of San Francisco. Uh, and then I was there for a while. And then when I turned eighteen, I moved to San Marcos, California. That's uh, a little bit closer, right? That yes, yeah, North County. Okay. I was living with my older sister. And did she ever, you know, hurt you, molest you, anything like that? No, no, she was like, she's five years older than me. Nice. When I was growing up, she was like a second mom. That's cool. My sister's a bitch, so. Yeah, I I just have sisters, all sisters. I have, like I mentioned earlier, I have like all the half siblings I've never met. I have two sisters and one brother. And like, both the sisters look like my dad. And they're okay. demons, and then me and my brother look like my mom or angels. Huh. Yeah, it's a duality of man situation going That's on. Interesting. So, how did your uh, other family group uh, deal with your home life situation growing up? Well, I was the oldest by ten years. So, wow. Yeah. So when I was fourteen, you know, my little sister was four, my brother was two. They don't. They don't really know what's going on, but. Sure. Because they were so young, they couldn't understand it the way I understood it. You know, like they kept it frank with me. I knew why my dad left my mom. I knew why she was living the way she was and why he was living the way he was. But they just kind of happened with them when they just kind of became iPad kids, dude. It breaks my heart. You know, like all the fighting going on, they were too young to do anything. So they're like, here, sit down, take the technology, and just be quiet. And so now my little brother, he's like 13 now. And he sees what I'm doing, wants to be more like me, but my dad's not around to teach him and raise him the way he did with me. So my little brother's really stuck because he grew up like 
isolated onto that iPad, watching YouTube all day and stuff like that, and not really living life. And now they're they're like, oh shit, mom and dad were both so busy being themselves that now I'm just kind of like a nobody, if that makes sense. Or at least the way I view them, they don't talk to me. You know, like, no. But do they go to school? Or? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, you know, half of Louisiana is actually not involved in public education, but they are, luckily. Wow, that's crazy. I can't imagine. I mean, public education is already bad enough. I can't yeah. imagine no education. And uh, I didn't realize when I moved to California, how much of it is influenced by like politics and stuff. So I realized like, oh, not only was I raised in a conservative state, I received a conservative education. So there's a lot of things that I learned as an adult in terms of like social justice and stuff like that. That's like wow. I, I mean, mean, it's just history, right? Well, yeah, but they will they will like whitewash stuff, and so you know, in Louisiana, they'll say like, oh, the Confederate. They don't say the Confederate was bad, but they're like, oh, they wanted slaves. The North did not. And that's the only thing that you could lean in. Well, into. that's interesting because now it seems like there's. Well, for a long time, they were like, oh, it's about states' rights. Now. Right, right. <laughs> it's like, oh, or like no. the, all the, um, like the tearing down of the statues and the changing the names of all kinds of places and stuff. We were basically like educated as if all of those things were perfectly okay. Like, uh, like a statue of, um, please don't quote me on this, but let's just say. Yeah, don't quote him. He's, thank you. He's not, a, he's not a historian. Robert E. Lee, I think, wasn't he a conservative general? So there's statues of Robert E. Lee, and they'll just be like, yeah, Robert E. Lee was a great general. He did this, and because he was so honorable, we have these statues. And then later on, I hear things like, oh, we shouldn't have this up because it represents this, and he did these things and stuff. And I'm like, well, where the fuck was that in the textbook whenever I had to write an entire report on this man, you know? And kind of like twisted my perspective. It's like, oh, wait, I was raised in a very uh, ignorant, uneducated and frankly racist, um, you know, sexist, homophobic place. And so moving out here, I didn't feel it, but whenever I went back home and I felt the need, to, not felt the need to argue, but disagreed with so many things that my peers and my family were saying, I was like, holy shit, what happened to us over here? Yeah. And why are we so closed-minded and blind? I don't know how we got onto that, but. This is natural conversation. Oh yeah, that is fun. It's true. I think it all started when I asked you where you came from. <laughs> yeah, uh, then start start talking about my sisters. And I asked yeah, you about your actually you because sister when I asked you about your family life, it's interesting you didn't say. No, I'm not trying to psychoanalyze you. It's just, <laughs> no, just no, interesting no. that you know. Talk, yeah, you know, you don't always think. Uh, I guess because of the age difference, right? You were ten years. They were all ten years younger, so yeah, it was a uh, it was a little bit weird because of that, especially because now they're at the age that I was when they were first born, right? And so we're finally at the point where the things that I'm telling them actually have relevance to their lives. So we, I feel like me and them have gotten a little bit closer recently, especially my little brother. Me and him are like we're pretty tight now. Uh, my little sister's still kind of a twat, but and then my youngest sister, she's like seven or eight years old. I mean, young parents, uh, uh, how, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? 52. All right. That was actually my football number whenever I played sports. Oh, that's cool. Um, my dad is like 40, and my mom is 39, I believe. Is that right? So everything's still, I feel like we all just still have a lot to learn. So sometimes I try to remind myself that like 10 years ago, I thought I was fucked, and here I am. So 10 years from now, I should be good. And if I'm good, the family's probably good too. I think we'll all be all right. Yeah, I mean, you know, whatever happens, happens. You can't change it. Yeah. I mean, we might, we might not be the closest. Like, me and my dad, we're on good terms, but we only talk every couple of weeks and stuff. And, you know, I'm fine with it. There's times where I wish, you know, we would talk a little bit more. But for the most part, I'm doing my thing, he's doing his. And I feel like that's the way it should be sometimes, you know? Yeah. So absolutely. I feel like I'm, I'm very... Uh, confident in what the future holds for everyone, honestly, for the most part. The world's kind of fucked, but I feel like we're, we're going to be okay. Yeah, like, you know, we've been on the brink of World War III for how long? 
<laughs> for literally so long, for longer than I've been alive. Yeah, but I remember like going, you know, in the 80s, it was like Cold War, and like, oh, Russia's gonna attack us any time. It's like, after a while, it's kind of getting numb to it. Yeah. Um, so now, even, even though maybe we're closer than ever, or, or you know, not ever, like, obviously the Cuban Missile Crisis is yeah. probably just the most time that could have went wrong. But there's a lot of stuff that we don't know, right? Like, exactly. Maybe it was like, uh, went to DEF CON, I forget which way it goes up or down, uh, where you, you know, but they don't, it doesn't, in the past, it doesn't always, people don't always know about it right away. Right. I also, uh, I've been thinking a lot lately about how we, like, we'll go through something and then we just kind of stop talking about it and we move on and we forget and then the next thing shows up. And lately it's been like so many things are happening that we can't keep up with, you know, what just happened sometimes. But yeah. the lack of resolution that we reach as a society honestly baffles me sometimes. Like with COVID, we never found a cure. We just kind of well, I mean, we got more and more relaxed. We never find a cure, right? There's just right. inoculations to, just like the flu. It was just, have a poop. Cure for common cold, the flu, yeah, COVID, you know, it's just. But uh, well, do you think com or so you know how the common cold? There's like hundreds or thousands of different variants of it, and it's constantly adapting. Do you think COVID will kind of become something like that, and just kind well, of? I mean, they're already had. Like I, from by the time they had a vaccine, it was already mutating. Fair, right. fair. So, but well, what I mean, to understand is, like, we've been battling. Well, even you know that we battle like, not just against viruses. Plants are trying. To, oh yes, they're there's even plants that we can eat. Like they have microtoxin, or or they would have. There's certain plants where you can't eat too much of it. Right. You know, like a lot of plants, like you eat too many carrots, you're gonna turn orange. It's like. Is that a fact? Yeah. That's something like something my grandma would have said. Yeah. Up. That's an absolute fact. She yeah. used to tell me I would turn into a chicken you know, if penguins, I uh, not penguins, uh, pel wait, no, flamingos. There's flamingos. They're they, pink because of what they eat, yeah, right? Yeah, pink because of what they eat, yeah. yeah. Okay. And there's certain, there's certain, uh, there's a lot of like, um, I don't, I don't know every detail about it because I'm not a, uh, biologist or don't study plants but there's like uh, these toxins in plants yeah. the defense mechanism they don't want to be eaten right you know so well it's take, take acorns for example like the um, you're able to eat acorns but you have to like take out the poison so you know as humans we've learned how to do that so do you eat acorns reason. frequently and you don't, a lot of times they didn't, they would make maize that had been made from acorn um, and flour. I think it's a couple of really? days. Yeah. I, I thought you were going such a different way with the acorn. I didn't know humans consumed acorns. Yeah, you don't, because of the process of getting out the poison, you, you, you can't just eat an acorn and take the antidote. So people aren't really talking about it. So kids aren't running around popping acorns in their mouth. Well, I don't think, I don't know if anybody really is doing it that much. Because there's other foods that we can, can, can consume. Yeah. It doesn't take so much work. You know, so why put so much effort into the acorn? Because yeah. if I'm being honest, how much, um, you know, what, what is in an acorn? In, there, in terms of contents, what can an acorn do for me? <laughs> you know? I, I imagine there's like, what, a third of a gram of protein and half a calorie? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, we, there's the things that we've uh, been able to breed, selective breeding, um, to like wheat and stuff. Supercharged acorns. That are yeah, like, so it would be interesting if you could like manipulate the acorn to where half not poisonous anymore. I prefer to manipulate my acorns by feeding them to squirrels and then I eat the fucking squirrel. Okay. Yeah. Give them to a rabbit. Yeah. Rabbit's actually one of my favorite foods, fun fact. That's cool. Smother that shit down with some onions and some bell peppers, put it over rice. Yeah, I've, uh, D 
deer jerky is like addictive. Oh my god, I love deer jerky. I like deer in general. Like yeah, I don't think I've had one. I've only had jerky. I don't think I had anything other. Man, I got uh, red beans with deer meat. And you serve also over rice. I'll bring you some sometime. Okay. I got some. They have I've had. It's just the jerky lasts the longest. The jerky is so amazing. that's the one like gets in your memory, right? You know? The rest of deer is nice. It's it's like beef. You know, you got to keep it refrigerated or keep yeah. it frozen. And it's like after a while, it's like oh, all the the regular deer is gone. All we got that's left is just jerky. Jerky. And you're like, okay, I can eat some more jerky. Yeah, deer jerky is amazing, and deer sausage. Anything you do with sausage, if you substitute for deer sausage, I feel like just takes it up a notch if the sausage is made properly and there's a uh, there's a company in my hometown uh mickey brown's like meat processing or something they'll make burritos and tamales and stuff out of the deer meat you wow. literally just like if you shoot a deer and you clean it up and you know bring it in an ice chest you just bring them the ice chest and like a month later you go pick up the same ice chest full of fully processed meat so you get like sausages but the burritos and the tamales holy shit Oh, they're incredible. You can just microwave them because they're fully cooked, frozen already. Nice. Incredible. Absolutely amazing. I'm about to go home right now. Just go shoot another deer. Just so I can get some of those fucking tamales. Yeah, that's cool. That's badass, man. All right. Well, I would love to talk to you forever. Uh, but this room, the brick room at the Madhouse Comedy Club, is going to be used for comedy but open like pretty it. soon. So we got to go before people come in to sit down oh, and yeah. watch comedy. We're not prepared for them to watch this podcast live. Besides the audience we already have here. Um, the second part for Patreon, though, we're going to record in the middle of the mic. Uh, we're going to be interrupting. We're going to be heckling. It's going to be a good time. I'm going to buy us a pint. He's going to get fucked up. I'm going to watch. Well, there you go. You got to subscribe to see that. Hell yeah, man. All right, well, thanks for doing the podcast. Good talking with you. Thank you for having me. Uh, oh, uh, before we go, how can people find you on the internet? Uh, I'm on Instagram, Skinny Benny, two eyes on Benny. I'm on TikTok, Ha Benny Benoit. And I'm on YouTube, Benny Benoit Bomedy. It's a little play on, like, you know, <laughs> if I have any blood followers, they'll be like, oh, Bomedy, this guy's down. And oh, then yeah. All my comedian friends will be like, oh, Bomedy, right? Because he sucks. Bomb. Cool. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, awesome. yeah uh, my phone number is nine eight five. Come see him. Uh, probably gonna try to post this tonight, so it's gonna be tomorrow, Friday, December eighth, uh, two thousand twenty-three, at Quantum Brewing. Oh yeah. We'll get to do ten minutes. Um, but this has been another episode of comedy, comedy or worse.